Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. I'll admit it, 10 years ago, I was a Swiss snob. It didn't have to be expensive and quartz was fine, but it had to be Swiss. This channel has really opened my eyes to the rest of the world and I have looked at so many watch brands, not necessarily manufactured in, but based in other countries, all bringing a little bit of that cultural flavor to your wrist. I have looked at so many Japanese and German watches, but also watches from Romania, Sweden, the UK, New Zealand, Australia, and recently a couple of brands from Korea, one of which is the subject of today's review. The watch in question is the fairly simply named Two by a brand based in Korea's capital Seoul called Pitsman. Now I am talking about South Korea here, by the way, just in case you're wondering, I'm not sure how big the micro brand scene is currently in the North. Pitsman actually came recommended to me by fellow Aussie YouTuber and good friend, Peter Kotza. He's looked at both their Model 1 and their Model 2 and highly rates them. Perhaps you've watched one of his videos already. If not, I'll leave a link up in the top corner of the screen. He's a photographer by trade and he makes stunning looking videos. Peter was particularly complimentary about the standard of finishing on this watch and I have to agree, it is beautifully done. Does that mean we have the beginnings of a Korean Grand Seiko on our hands? Will we soon be talking about KDM in the way we currently talk about JDM? That's one of the questions for us today. Let's flip the camera and look for the answer. Before we get any further, you saw the pop-up, but I didn't play the siren. So there it is. This video is sponsored by Pitsman. I will of course therefore leave a link to their website in the description of the video. All right, let's begin at the logical place, the packaging. Clearly Pitsman are not pitching themselves as an entry-level company making entry-level watches. I would not even be suggesting Grand Seiko comparisons if this was a $299 watch and it isn't. $999 watch and the packaging clearly advertises its higher entry point. This is some of the best packaging I have ever seen, and that includes numerous Rolex and Tudors that I have reviewed over the years. Perhaps not Omega though, as they tend to go really all in with those big wooden boxes. Suffice to say, it's very nice. You feel like you're getting something special. The box is enormous. It feels really substantial. Comes with a two year warranty, the usual 30 day return, policy card and advice about keeping the watch away from magnets and sudden impacts. There is also a second Epson style strap here. Please note it is a 100 US dollar option. It's not a freebie. I'll show you on bracelet and leather over the course of the video. Now, of course, this big box is just gonna take up space in a cupboard somewhere, but it'll look great doing it. So what then is the Pitsman 2? Well, it's this. A classically proportioned, understated, go anywhere, do anything, no date daily, with a great movement and a very high standard of finishing. There really are no material deficiencies here. Everything is beautifully well put together. The hands and the indices are especially nice. I'll show you some close-ups of them a bit later. This one arrived in Sydney just over a month ago and I have been wearing it a lot. This is very much my preferred style of watch these days. I'm into the simple three-hand and go anywhere, do anything sports watches, and this fits into that mold nicely. You will not be surprised when I tell you it's a 40-20. So 40 mil in diameter with a 20 mil lug width, only 10.7 mil thick though, and that includes a piece of domed sapphire crystal. Lug tip to lug tip, I measure at 45.5. That is great for helping a watch wear sweetly. The bracelet has male end length, so it needs a short lug to lug, and thankfully it gets one. Sized up for my seven inch wrist on the supply bracelet, it weighs in at 132 grams. Water resistance is a rather unusual 150 meters. Now that's the same as my Omega Aquaterra. Perhaps therefore it was a deliberate choice by Pitsman. The glass is domed sapphire with AR undercoating and the movement powering this bad boy is a Solita SW300. You don't see the SW300 all that often, do you? I've only come across a handful in my time, but it's a real step up from the 200. It's a clone of the ETA 2892 and not the 2824 after all. Improvements include its level of decoration, which is obvious, the fact that it is no date specific and it has a 56 hour power reserve as advertised on the case back. That means it has the new optimization barrel assembly introduced in late 2020. There's a skeleton 
Quantanized custom rotor here as well, deep etched with the Pitsman brand name, all very nice. Now I don't often say you should look at the back of a watch to get the idea of its quality. I think you see what I mean here though, it looks really good. I had this one on the time grapher by the way, it was running at plus one second per day, that'll do nicely. Case finish is immaculate, super fine satin brush in most areas, but with a high polish chamfer running end to end. The fixed bezel is unusual, not because it's high polish, but because it's concave. I guess the concave bezel and the slightly outwardly flared lugs are the Pitsman's own signatures here and mark it out as different from the rest of the sports watch crowd. It's a six mil crown, deep etched with the Pitsman logo, screw down of course to give it that 150 meter rating. Zero bracelet end link rattle by the way, another sign that this has been well made. There are a couple of sharp edges including the lug tips, but they're only sharp in the hand, they're not actually sharp on wrist which is just as well. The bracelet is very nice, kind of an angular oyster style, male end links, but that's fine because of the short lug to lug. Most of the bracelet is brushed, including the sides and the upper surfaces, but there are angled sections forwards and backwards of each of those links, they are high polished. The clasp is a milled scissor with double triggers, no micro adjustment, but the watch is supplied with two half links, giving a bit of flexibility. I'm using both, one either side of the clasp, as you can see here. Pitsman logo etched into it again, all very nicely done. As is the Epson style leather strap, not cheap at $100. I mean, 50 would be a no brainer to add it on, but at 100, you should definitely have a rummage through your box to see if you have anything similar before buying it. It does look good though, and there is very little lug gap. So it's a really seamless look. That does mean that thicker straps will struggle though. So probably best have a second rummage through your box. High polished hardware once more with the Pitsman logo etched in it to match the one on the crown and the one on the dial. It looks good on wrist as as well, as you'll see in just a minute. Right, let's get in and have a look at the dial and handset then. Very legible this watch. Those indices are really long and the hands are actually quite large and quite long. And have a look at how they sit. The sweep of the hour hand perfectly aligns with the circular inner recess of the dial. The sweep of the minute hand hits the outer edges of the hour markers again perfectly. And that long minute hand with big arrow tip hits the angled chapter ring with minute markers also perfectly. Some great attention to detail. The branding is discreet, just a logo and the name and the city printed above the pinion and automatic and the water resistance rating printed beneath it. The 150 meters slash 500 feet is in pale blue, but the font is microscopic. So you barely notice that it's there. Never mind that it adds an additional color to what otherwise would be a monotonal dial. The inner circular section of the dial is flat. The outer section has 10 concentric circles. Yes, I got the loop out and I counted them. Going in even further, the finish on the hands and indices is excellent. Everything is high polished. The indices have two high polished silver flanks with a loom strip down the middle. Now those flanks actually bevel inwards. You can see that if you look at the inner edges that are also beveled. There's plenty of loom filled down the hands as well. That adds contrast to the high polished silver and therefore adds legibility both during the day and after dark. Now with a different handset and different indices, for example, with Dauphine hands and arrowhead indices, they could have taken this watch in an entirely different direction. They could have made it far more dressy than sporty, but as it stands, they definitely went for legibility and sportiness, and I'm happy that they did. C3 Superluminova and plenty of it in the center sections of those indices and all three hands. The big arrowhead tip of the second hand is especially noticeable after dark. Again, suggesting sportiness rather than dressiness. Most dress watches, if they have loom, don't have loom on the second hand. If I turn the speed up, sure it fades as loom always does, but everything is still visible at the end of my test. I always reckon four to five hours of human eye equivalent. The loom gets my seal of approval therefore as does the way the watch wears. Male end links, but short lug to lug work well for me. You'll have no problem wearing this one if you have six and a half inch wrist, perhaps even smaller. The restriction comes interestingly at the other end because it only has two spare full size links after I sized it for me, meaning this watch taps out at above seven and a half inches, unless of course you ask the manufacturer for extra links. And it's an attractive wrist roll. There's enough high polish with that bezel and those bracelet facets that the watch looks expensive. Now I have managed to put a few scratches in the bracelet already though, as you can see, like I said, I've been wearing this one quite a bit over the last four or five weeks. And that's the pocket shop. With no micro adjustments, you are rather forced to wear it loose, but it's comfortable enough that you can do that with no issues. 
Now I'll run through the same sequence of shots, but this time with the leather strap. I could definitely grow to appreciate this one on leather. The tone of the strap goes really nicely with this gray dial, and it's such a snug fit at the lugs. It looks really well integrated. But of course, the leather strap rather negates the water resistance, doesn't it? Not quite as contentious as wearing a diver on a leather strap, but considering this one is an affordable Aquaterra slash Explorer alternative, the leather does force a bit of a compromise. Talking of compromises, what are my moans and niggles? Well, I have almost zero complaints materially, even though they're charging a grand for it. I think this is one really nicely made watch throughout. It looks good on wrist. It looks like a quality product because it is a quality product. But the Sapphire Crystal is a bit of an unusual choice. It appears to be single domed or non-concentric double domed, meaning you get distortion from some angles. I would have perhaps expected glass like this in a more overtly retro style watch than the Pitsman. And the etching on the crown is perhaps a bit too deep for its own good, leaving some raised sharp edges. Now obviously when you buy a watch you don't spend your days rubbing the crown with your index finger, which is just as well, because if you did the crown would end up infused with flakes of dead skin. That's slightly gross. Sorry about that. I guess my biggest complaint about this watch is regarding its character, or lack thereof. You know I'm gonna go there, don't you? I'm actually surprised that it took me this long. It's a Korean watch without a lot of soul. No, look, don't do that. I do not deserve a boom tish for that one. It's the most obvious joke in the world, but it's kind of true, isn't it? I mean, everything here is beautifully done. The handset and indices especially are just lovely. It's super legible, the case finish is immaculate, the movement is much better than you get in the equivalently priced Swiss-made watch, and the bracelet is very well done also, but it doesn't have a lot of character it doesn't have a lot of charisma. The fact that I got the grey one perhaps doesn't help. Maybe a bit of colour would have added something. But if we have a look at their website, there's not a lot of help for us here either. It's blue, grey or green. No orange, no purple, no yellow, not even a Tiffany blue to bring this thing to life. Now this is all rather subjective. I'm sure there will be many people watching this who appreciate the watch exactly as it is, who prefer an understated look overall. For them, therefore, this watch gets a two thumbs up recommendation. But to return at long last to the Grand Seiko analogy, are Pitsman possibly the new Korean Grand Seiko? Well, no, not yet anyway. Case finish is great, hand index finish all spot on. They're certainly on the right track to find a niche at that $1,000 plus price point if that's what they want to do. But their designs just lack a bit of spirit at the moment. This is only the second watch. I can't really give them too hard a time for that. It's still very early in their evolution as a brand. In terms of quality, I think they are a Korean Christopher Ward. Now, if you've never handled a Christopher Ward, you're probably scoffing right now. But if you do or have owned CWs, then you just raised an eyebrow. I rate Christopher Ward as materially the very best you can buy for $1,000. And I think Pitsman is right alongside CW for quality. Time will tell if they can produce designs to match. So there you have it, a Korean watch that lacks a bit of soul. No, honestly, I told you, I don't want any of that. Beautifully executed, fully justifying its $1,000 price in terms of fit and finish and the specifications, but it just lacks that little bit of something intangible that allows you to really engage and fall in love with a watch, I think. Roll on the Pitsman 3 though, if it is half as well made as this one, it'll still be twice as well made as most of the watches at its price point. Thanks for making it all the way to the back end of the video. If you wanna check out the only other Korean watch that I've reviewed, click here, or if you prefer something Japanese, click here. I hope to see you again in a future video.